Hello again, welcome back to Glaciers and Glacial Geomorphology. At the end of the last session, I left you with this exercise, trying to think what would be the vertical stress profile, the vertical strain profile, and the vertical velocity profile through a glacier or ice sheet, given Glenn's flow law and the shear stress equation. So, the stress profile, well that's going to be given by tau equals rho g h sine alpha, density of ice, force of gravity, the height or thickness of ice above your point, and the surface gradient. Well, as you can see from this diagram, the surface gradient is a constant because we're always going down beneath the first, beneath the same point on the surface. Likewise, rho and g, we can take those as constants, so they don't change. So the only variable in that equation is h. As we move progressively down through our glacier, h is progressively steadily increasing. So as we work our way down from the surface into the depths of the glacier all the way to the bed, tau will increase steadily from zero at the surface, where h equals zero, so you're multiplying zero into that equation, and as you progress down the glacier it will increase steadily as a straight line in a linear fashion with your increase of depth. So that's the, the vertical stress profile, shear stress profile. What's the, what's the sideways force encouraging movement in the glacier? What about the strain? Well, the strain is the hardness function multiplied by an exponent of the stress. Strain goes as an exponent of the stress. Typically, we say, for now, uh, that exponent is about 3, so the strain goes as a cube of the stress. So if the stress is increasing steadily, the strain, it'll be zero at the top, because st stress is zero at the top, so you're multiplying a zero into the equation, so that the, the strain is going to be zero, the, the deformation uh, by, by creep, uh, the internal deformation is going to be zero right on the surface of the glacier, but then that will increase exponentially as a curve with depth, because E is going as the exponent of tau. Now, the one that students often find tricky is the velocity profile. What's happening here? Because we look at that and we say, oh, look, there's a great deal of strain. There's a great deal of deformation at the bottom of the glacier. There's not so much at the top of the glacier. So presumably there'll be lots of movement at the bottom of the glacier and not so much at the top of the glacier. So perhaps you think the velocity profile is going to look like that. No. Look up extrusion flow in the textbook and see what that was all about. We don't really believe in extrusion flow in very many situations nowadays. That isn't the way glaciers work. The way glaciers work, you remember, piggyback style. Whatever motion is being accomplished at this level, even though not much additional motion is being accomplished higher up, that motion down there is carrying everything above it. So the velocity profile is that, yes, we have that much movement accomplished in the lower portion of the glacier, that carries everything above with it, and then at higher levels in the glacier, we're adding on that additional amount of movement. So our velocity profile ends up being a curve looking a bit like that. <laughs> 